Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create volume displacement using geometry nodes in Blender 5 to create cloud-like structures from meshes. This is a really interesting new feature, one I've personally been waiting for a long time. Until now, the power to manipulate volumes at this level has really only been possible in higher-end applications like Houdini, but with Blender 5, it is finally possible. Please note this tutorial will get a little involved. So what exactly is volume displacement? So it all comes down to the new grid type that's been introduced into Blender. Grids basically let you represent 3D data as a field of little 3D pixels called voxels. A voxel is just a fancy name for a volume pixel. Each voxel can store data, things like density or even vector values, which can describe direction or position in 3D space. To describe things simply, let's look at this in 2D for a moment. Here's a simple circle converted into a grid. So what if we wanted to make this circle shape look a little more cloud-like, sort of like soft wispy edges but still having a recognisable silhouette with the same shape. One way we could do this is to displace parts of the grid to create this sort of effect by pushing and pulling the voxels around slightly to create that cloudy effect. This is where vectors come in, where we could generate something that describes for each voxel where it should be displaced to in the x and y direction. We could just assign random displacement vectors at each voxel, but this would look very messy and not very cloud-like. Instead, we want smooth organic distortion, and that's where noise functions come in. So think of noise kind of like structured randomness. It gives you variation, but with smooth transitions. You input a value, like the position of a voxel, and instead of giving you random values back, it will give you a value similar to that of other values nearby. It's used all the time for natural effects like clouds, smoke, terrain, and all that sort of stuff. So what we're going to do is use the noise functions in Blender's geometry nodes to push and pull values of a grid around to create that cloud-like structure. So let's go to Blender. First, I'll do some setup of the grid volume before we jump into volume displacement. Here I've got an object and I've added a geometry nodes modifier to it. The object needs to be watertight with no boundary edges so that we can convert it into a volume. I'd also make sure its scale is applied. The first thing we'll do is convert it to a grid using the Mesh to Density Grid node. To visualize it, we will then need to convert it to a volume by feeding it into a store named Grid node. We also need to give this grid a name called Density so that a volume material can use it later. You probably won't see much yet, so to get more definition, on the Mesh to Density Grid node, try increasing the density and decreasing the voxel size. Be super careful when reducing the voxel size, as this can quickly increase the number of voxels inside the grid, which will either slow down, crash or freeze Blender. It's very easy to do. For the finest detail, I usually set voxel size to about 0.01, but don't go much smaller. Once that's connected up, we'll also add some basic lighting for now, so we can see the grid. Switch to the rendered view in the viewport, and you probably won't see much yet. For this tutorial, we'll switch to cycles, as this seems the best for volume visualization. I told you this tutorial was not for the faint-hearted. For the moment, let's just select the default light. Go to its properties 
and increase its power to about 10,000. If you still can't see anything, make sure the store named grid node has the word density in it. We'll add a material and some better lighting in a moment, but let's get into the main part of the tutorial, volume displacement. So to displace this volume, we'll sample the density of the grid at each position using the sample grid node and then change the density field values using a field to grid node. Because of the way the grid type is efficiently stored in Blender, we also need to add something called a set grid background node at the end as well, which resets any inactive voxels back to zero. On the sample grid node, the position value is being set implicitly, but we'll add a position node ourselves because we want to start manipulating this value. So this setup is sampling the density value at each point of the grid, resetting the density value at each point and outputting that value. Not very exciting yet. Let's try introducing an add vector node after the position node and see what it does. When we change values, for instance, the Z value, we can move the object up and down slightly. This is because for each position in the grid, we are resampling the density value from a different position nearby. In effect, we are pushing and pulling the density values around, displacing the volume. You'll notice a slight problem here. If we push or pull the values in the add vector node too much, then the object starts to disappear outside of its original silhouette. This is because the grid that was initially generated is restricted by its original boundaries. Instead, we'll need to create a separate larger grid to overlay the new density values onto so we can move the voxel densities around more. For the moment, let's do this by adding a bounding box node to the setup as well as a transform node to scale it up slightly. Now, add a new grid by duplicating the density grid node with the same values as the other one. We'll then hook this up to the bounding box. Because Blender stores these grids efficiently by grouping voxels with the same densities together into clumps called tiles, we need to separate these voxels back out using the voxelize grid node and then plug this one into the field to grid node we have already. Now you'll be able to have a larger area to resample the density values. The larger the bounding box size, the further we can displace the grid. However, we have to be careful making the grid too big as this will create more voxels and consume more memory and processing. We'll make this bounding box slightly more efficient later on. We're now ready to start using noise to displace the grid in cloud-like patterns. Instead of changing the values in the add node manually, let's append a noise node, appending its color output into the vector add node you'll probably see a change straight away. There's something a bit odd here as the volume appears to displace to the bottom corner of the object's center. This is because the noise generated from the noise texture node are color values where each X, Y and Z value range from zero to one. This means that the densities are only being moved in a positive direction and we want values moved in both positive and negative directions for the effect. 
we can fix this by introducing a map range vector node after the noise node before it is fed into the add vector node. Change the min and max values of this map range node to minus one and plus one. And this will remap the values to include negative ones as well. This should recenter the effect of the displacement. This is starting to look pretty good and there are some other grid nodes we can introduce to enhance the effect. The grid curl node is one of them. This instead looks at the noise we are generating and calculates a directional value based on the density values of that noise. This creates better direction values for the volume displacement at each point. Just after the voxelize grid node for the bounding box, add a field to grid node first and plug the color output of the noise into this so we can capture those noise values. Now add the grid curl node in after this so we can calculate better directional values. Then we need to sample this new grid at each point and feed it into the add vector node instead. After the sample grid node, add a normalize node to make the displacement vectors consistent. The displacement amount may be a little hard to control, but you can change this by introducing a vector scale node that will lessen or increase the effect accordingly. Also, we actually need to subtract the direction vector from the position as we are currently applying the directional displacement in reverse. This creates a more cloud-like setup for the displacement. I'd encourage you to experiment with this noise setup further yourself, trying different combinations of nodes to generate different values for the noise and explore the possibilities. As an aside, Blender's Advect Grid node acts in a similar way but instead moves through a vector grid, which can increase calculation time because here we are just sampling a vector grid once. Let's just go back and tidy up this bounding box. The main problem with this is that there are lots of empty grid points that end up getting sampled. So we want to cut down the number of calculations we really just need to sample on or near the outside of the object's silhouette. We can do this by replacing the bounding box with a slightly inflated version of the original object. We can do this by taking the original geometry and moving its vertices outwards slightly. Add a set position node to the incoming geometry and then feed a normal node into the offset input, which will move vertices out in the directions they are pointed in. Then add a vector scale node to control the effect. Now, instead of the bounding box, feed this into the second mesh to density grid node. Now we have a controllable area around the outside of the object, which will mean less calculation time. Another tip at this point is to scale the object up as the larger the volume, the more detail and variation the noise will have. Another tip at this point is to scale the object up as the larger the volume, the more the detail the noise will have. Be careful, however, as this will increase performance time. Once you have scaled it to, say, 2 to 10 meters in width or height, remember always to apply the scale using Control A, so Blender will calculate the size of the volume properly. Now this is set up, we can add a volume material and introduce a sky texture for better lighting. 
More effective lighting improves the end result significantly, especially when it comes to volumes. Hop on over to the shader tab and add a new material and delete the principled BSDF node and add a principled volume node. Hook this up to the material outputs volume. Note the density attribute is set to the word density, which allows it to match with the volume generated by our node setup. Hop back to the geometry nodes tab and add a set material node at the end of the tree. Set this to the material we just created. Go back to the shading tab and make sure the material is working by changing the color of the principled volume node. Finally, switch to the world shader and add a sky texture to the background by attaching it to the color socket. The result should be a really natural, organic looking displacement, all procedural and all inside Blender 5. If you're interested, I've put together a prototype setup and wrapped it inside a modifier on Gumroad if you want to download this and experiment. It also uses Blender's new closure system, so you can swap noise functions and play around without rewriting the setup. It has a small price attached to help fund further work, so I hope that's okay. The link is available in the description. Thanks for watching, and if you found this useful, give it a like and share it around, and I'll see you next time.